Hi there, it's me, Jordan Van Haslow. Welcome to Jordan Van Haslow and Friends live on Hot 702.5 FM Las Vegas. Let's get on with the show. There you go. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> I'm here today with my buddy, a uh, very, very talented uh, producer, writer, uh, editor, director, singer, guitarist, <laughs> songwriter, Justin King. <laughs> I'm so glad you're It's like you juggler, <laughs> cat trainer. Uh... <laughs> no, truly. And it's so funny. So you and I have had the opportunity to, to, to work on a couple of projects together over the last mm-hmm. few years. And I always knew you were a photographer and a director, et cetera. But then as I started like really kind of just like Googling you and like going through your background and checking out your work, I had no idea that you literally are a one man <laughs> it's like traveling the, vaudeville show like <laughs> totally it's like a what do they call it like a, a jack of all trades but i don't master anything i just keep doing new stuff <laughs> <laughs> but that's the other thing that i find so fascinating because you seem pretty prolific like you're always popping up in my instagram feed and my facebook oh, feed and it seems like you're always working on something new you always have something going on <laughs> i think that that's kind of amazing what's a oh, what's thanks. a a day in your life like <laughs> uh, it's kind of funny because it's like everything just for me it like i mean i get that a lot people are like god you're like all over the place or, or doing too much or something but i know for me it like it, they all kind of link together like i played in a band and i would do our videos and those videos i do when i dj i make the club videos and that turned into doing some like short films and then those films turn into you know projections and so I don't know. To me, it's always kind of linked, but I get it. When people meet me, they're like, what the, what, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's kind of what it is, right? Because I think most of the time people, and I, I, I would imagine that is it sometimes like kind of even difficult for yourself? Because, you know, I know usually people try to kind of put you in some kind of a classifiable yeah, yeah. box. Like you're the singer or you're the, the this. How do you normally introduce yourself or how do you describe yourself when you're, when you're talking to of- folks, the uninitiated? Oh yeah, I guess it's kind of like whatever the situation is. Like if I'm in, like you know around band people or like at a show or something, then obviously I'm like, I guess my band comes up first, you know, <laughs> for what I for what I for what I do, you know. I don't really talk about you know DJing or something there or whatever. So it's kind of like I don't know, kind of whatever I, whoever I'm talking to, like whatever they do, then it's relatable, I guess. Yeah. But I guess for me, like kind of doing a little bit of everything is like. You know, if I just did editing all the time, I'd go like crazy, you know, so it's kind of like I can come over here and make some videos and when I get kind of bored doing that or it's kind of slow, then I'm lucky that I could like go do some photos for a while or go do something, you know, so yeah, I don't get like in a routine of like hating what I do or something because I do it too much. So I know I kind of bounce around, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> what, but lately what? it's been mostly just videos and photography. I mean, that's been my main gig, I guess, or totally has, 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 has it been, um, has, has, has work increased, decreased, or kind of stayed the same since, you know, post COVID? Well, at first it was, it was kind of funny, like the end of last year, I usually kind of set up what I want to do mainly the next, the next year towards the end of the year, you know, Mm -hmm. because in the year, you know, you kind of get retrospective and you start planning your, what your resolutions and also my birthday's New Year's Eve. So I kind of like, it's always like a big thing. A big like moment to kind of think about what am, what am I going to do next? <laughs> so last year I did like um I did a play that I did like ten years ago, but it, I brought it back. It's this play called Charlie, and we did it at Casita del Campo. It's a like a famous like drag theater that's in a basement of a Mexican restaurant in Silver Lake, but uh-huh. always packed and always really fun. But I brought it back there, and but my plan was to get it up and running again, and then and it's a rock musical, so it included music, and then also I did projections for the sets, so that was video work, and then also I get to sing in it and stuff too, so and I get to write it and everything, so it's kind of, <laughs> I kind of threw all the eggs in like one It's basket. like a Justin King production, totally. starring yeah. Justin King, written by like, Justin <laughs> King. <laughs> it's like, what, what could I do that I could just put all these things into one package, and then, you know, this could be like my baby project, you know? So, yeah. Uh, so it's kind of cool. I mean, it's definitely, I get to use everything I, I get to do, you know? But, but that How was did, the plan was wait, um, was just to get it up and running. So I, this year I could, I was going to take it over to London at the Soho Theater and like, um, you know, I wanted to travel with it because I figured, you know, LA is really hard to do theater in. There's not really mm-hmm. a theater scene. So it's like, which is odd. It's like the city of actors, yet no actor wants to be in a play. <laughs> 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 it doesn't make sense. They just want to be famous. They don't want to act, you know? Basically. Um, but then, um, so that was the plan. I, had, I went over there right before we did the play here. I was in London and talked to people there and 
So I was like, cool, we'll do the warm up one for Halloween in LA and then I'll pack it up and we'll ship it over and go do it. And, you know, like I was going to go do drag con. And so I'm like, while I'm there, I'll, you know, start to play up. But obviously we can't, we can't have shows and we can't travel. So it just kind of screwed up my plans for the year. Totally. <laughs> like, um, totally. But then it, everything kind of paused. And then, it, and then luckily I got like a lot of work, mostly editing this year. I've been doing a lot of stuff for like a lot of the drag queens that like are doing green screen stuff, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, I did a bunch of videos with Mario Diaz and Jackie Beat and Sherry Vine. And so, you know, that's been an easy way. They just film it at home, ship it to me, Dropbox. <laughs> and then I edit it all up and then they take it back, you know? So yeah, are you, are you digging the, you, you, cause I, I've been talking to people and again, I know I'm torn, right? Cause on one hand I miss like the face-to-face -face interaction of dealing <clears throat> with people, but I'm, mm -hmm. there is a part of me and, I, and I'm pretty much, I'm a very much an extrovert, but there's this part of me that's kind of digging the kind of Zoom calls. So like you kind of yeah. have an excuse to like, yeah, okay, I have to jump, click. You know, like, <laughs> are, you, <laughs> yep. are, you, are you like a social butterfly? Are you kind of enjoying like kind of just deal, working remotely and kind of like, yeah, that file is in Dropbox, I'll get it back to you or? Yeah, um, it, it's, at first it was kind of nice because my, my job was also with um, DJ, DJing on the weekends like I DJ at Fubar on like Tuesdays and Saturdays I think mm -hmm. and then maybe sometime fill in during the week so that was kind of my social time so my old schedule was like I you said, home and you said edit. you think you're like knocking on wood that like everything comes back <laughs> you're like Tuesdays and Thursdays I think <laughs> I think it's been a while but um but yeah it was just kind of that was kind of my way to get out because I'd be home stuck in the computer editing all day or writing something and then it you know it'd almost be nice that I can go out and get paid to go out and then work at a club and then see people and interact and stuff. But it was kind of, I was getting a little burnout because I was doing a lot at the end of last year and then trying to do that too. And being up till, you know, three, four at night. And <laughs> it was like, I'm like, I need to like stop. And then the universe stopped. <laughs> so I kind of got what I wanted, but uh, it was, you know, it's a little, it was well, just a little confusing at first, I think for everybody. We're like, oh, yeah. whoa, what do I well, do my, now? Like, my friends and I always talk about like, you know, you get what you always get what you ask for. So that's why you need to be as specific as possible. <laughs> right. Careful. Yeah. Because <laughs> I do remember the first couple of weeks of 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 shutdown, you know, while it was also, you know, weird just because no one really knew what was going on. Like for yeah, at first yeah. it was kind of like, oh wow, this is kind of <clears throat> cool. Like I don't have to return that call and yeah, like, no one's <laughs> expecting me to. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty awesome. But then, like nine months in, how is it in LA? I'm, I'm in New York right now. How is it in oh, LA? Because wow. I know everything's down, and you're totally like you're like have. So is it shut days? There's a curfew now, right? Yeah, they just As started a curfew on when or, or just this week, I think. Curfew is just like ten to five, so it's a, it's basically just trying to get people not to party at nighttime. Yeah, I think is the only thing. And then they just started. Um, I think tomorrow they start. The outdoor seating they can't do anymore. They can still do takeout and delivery, but the the seating's gotta go. Because a lot of these places are putting up like tents and then putting people in the tent, so it kind of defeats the purpose of outdoor seating, you know? No, totally. So, I saw a meme about that. Like someone, you know, took a picture of like one of the tents, and they were like, "So let's get this straight. So we can't eat <laughs> indoors. It was like we have to eat, but we can eat outdoors, but only if." inside is outside or something yeah like lines. it doesn't make any sense you're just putting people in a plastic <laughs> bubble outside like i don't know people are the worst i mean they're so stupid it's just like uh it's frustrating because I, I mean also with club work it's that was the first thing to go you know like totally bars shut down first and then they're going to be the last thing to open so you know all that other kind of club work and stuff i had it's definitely gone for a while so <laughs> yeah who, who knows when that's going to open again and when it does it won't be the same you know they're going to have to have different rules so uh so yeah i mean at first it was kind of nice beginning of the year because or when this thing happened it was like you know it's a weird phase at first we're like uh, you know no toilet mm -hmm. paper no groceries and like what the hell am i doing <laughs> like i'm sitting down to work and then usually when i would get up and go to the gym or take a break i'm like well i'll just sit across <laughs> the room now like i don't know what else to do this is weird so um that's what I kind of miss the things that would kind of break up my day, you know, like going to the gym or going to go eat or go to a movie or going to go work at a club or something, you know, when it, yeah. I kind of normally work at home anyway. So, but the only difference now is I don't have those things to kind of, <clears throat> you know, sprinkle in to like break up 
day and afternoon nighttime kind of stuff yeah no i get that i did that the other day as a matter of fact i was like just sitting at, in, in the house and i was like working all day and i was like just so sick of staring at my computer and i'm like you know oh i can't deal with this and i put on my coat and i started walking down the street and then i realized oh wait there's nowhere to go yeah. <laughs> so I turned around and came back upstairs, took off my coat, and went back to work. <laughs> yeah, I, I started doing that just a couple of weeks ago. I was, I just noticed I was kind of sitting at home and looking at my phone too much, or you know, because it's kind of I don't have TV at home or anything. It's more just nighttime projector movie nights or something. But uh-huh. I was just, you know, just sitting and staring at my phone all the time, and because I don't, you know, even though it looks like I do a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff I do and put out is also I kind of do a lot of them all at once. So then it kind of. You Seems know, comes like out over, yeah, it comes out over time, but I really all worked on that like stuff in like a week, you know, and then it's, then I have like a couple of weeks, I'm not doing anything. So, got it. <laughs> so that it makes sense. Like there's a lot out, but it's usually I'm kind of like cramming a bunch of stuff in one and then, or I've done a lot over time and then they come out at different times and it's like, I don't, you know, I don't have a control over it, but uh, <laughs> I did start walking, like I live in Pasadena. So the, there's a great city hall that's down here. So I kind of walk up there and come back and just to kind of get out now that it's not like scorching. 115 degrees anymore <laughs> yeah can actually go outside and enjoy like a kind of a cooler walk or something so yeah i'm trying totally. to do and, something you know break it up but and it pasadena is nice too because you don't have your you're outside of the city and it's it's pasadena is so pretty I think. yeah i love it here i've been here like five years i've lived everywhere in la i mean i've lived i think i've counted like 17 places or something over 20 <laughs> years I've been here. like it's been ridiculous so, so how uh, did Pasadena come about? Because Pasadena, I um, always think of Pasadena as being like really off the beaten trail, like unless you're like married with kids <laughs> and work and like insurance. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, like Artie, it's like Artie's suburbia. It's like kind of the people who like grow up in or have their 20s in Silver Lake and they're hipsters. When they get to be adults, they come to Pasadena, I think is the thing. Because <laughs> it is still a very art city. There's a lot of museums and art walks or there was art fairs and a lot of yeah. kind of restaurants there's not really a bar scene or anything so it kind of keeps me out of trouble <laughs> totally but, uh, <laughs> i love it though i mean it's actually not as far uh, it's like 10 minutes out of downtown and just take the train and go you know it's super simple but i, mean, I get it a lot of people you know la is like a bunch of cities in one so a lot of people in like weho don't ever leave weho people in silver like don't leave silver you know so well, it's kind of like it's you're you're absolutely right. I was just having this conversation with my good friend who is, was born and raised in Santa Monica, and we'll talk about things. And I always lived in Hollywood in my time in LA. So like mm-hmm. I basically lived in a bubble of like from Hollywood to Beverly Hills, and rarely did I go any farther south than like Melrose. And I would talk <laughs> right? about all of these places or restaurants, you know, that I'm like, oh my god, it's in Hollywood. It's legendary. And this guy is like, lives in Santa Monica, born and raised. He has like no clue of anything, you know, beyond wow. like Sawtell. So I think it, you're very, <laughs> ac- you're very accurate in terms of how LA, everyone kind of stays in like their like little radius. Like, so I would yeah. say it's probably like everyone kind of has like a five or six mile radius. And if they're lucky to also work within that radius, then they'll definitely never leave. <laughs> yeah, they'll never leave. Yeah. I mean, I get it. So I mean, it's mostly, I think really with the gay crowds, because like, I get it. Like for some people, just need to feel safe or be around people, you know, like-minded people. So they stay in WeHo and they work in WeHo and they live in WeHo and they, you know, and mm-hmm. Silver Lake too. The kind of like even downtown now has its own scene of of gays and restaurants and its own little group that they just kind of stay down there too. <laughs> yeah, so I was talking to um, was it Courtney Act once and she when she was living in WeHo. We were doing something in Silver Lake. She's like, I haven't even been to Silver Lake. And she lived here for a few years. <laughs> like, I've never been over that other side. Like, they just don't know, you know. LA's, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's how people because just kind of. Because it's also far, you know. So, do you know, I have never, like, I don't drive. I don't, I don't, I don't drive. I've lived in Los Angeles for six years, but I, I spent my entire adulthood in New York. And so I just nice. never. I never like I've never owned a car as an adult. I've never it's just I just don't drive. Like if I if we were going to like the super like if we were going shopping together and you were like, "Okay, I'm driving." I would like instinctively ch- attempt to sit in the back seat just cuz I'm so used to <laughs> <laughs> And Uber. that's right. Yeah, but like but that's one of the reasons I think people don't leave cuz it's so far. I remember using Santa Monica as as the um as like the litmus test because when I think of Santa Monica I think it might as well be on the Pacific Rim but (laughs) like I remember going to I was like going to an event or something and I just remember like getting in the car 
getting on the 101, thinking, why the hell am I going through the valley and to get here? And it was so far. <laughs> and I feel like it was like a $60 <clears throat> car ride. And it's like, oh my uh, goodness, I literally could have flown across country for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in less time than it took me to get across totally. town. <laughs> oh my God, like the beach seems, I mean, even from downtown or from, you know, not, I mean, Pasadena alone, this seems really far, but the beach always seems so far away. I remember one time my friend Chris and I were driving from, I think from Hollywood, from his house. And, you know, we were talking the whole time. And then at one point we just like stopped and we we're like, are we still driving? Like, we're still, <laughs> are we still going? Like, yeah, we just got to keep going until we hit the water, right? Like, this, and he was like, I'm thinking the same thing. Like, are we still in this car? Like, my God, it seems like we can get to Disneyland faster than we can get to the beach. It seems so, it, it's traffic and distance. It's like, it's totally. Have I you done it? It's confusing too, because the 405, Wait. I always think of that being like, that's Santa Monica. We're at the end, you know, but then there's also another. You're like, no, nope, you still have a long streets. way to go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Long way to go. I remember I have um, friends who live in New York, but he's a tennis player. And so he always comes out to Los Angeles, I think once a year for this tennis tournament. And his girlfriend's kind of bougie. So they always stay at Shutters. Like that's like her thing. But I remember meeting them at Shutters on the beach uh, for drinks. And then I had like a party to go to back in Hollywood. And I mm. remember getting into the car and like, you know, driver, we're off. And I'm, this is a while ago. Like I think I was playing with like words with friends or something. And I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm sitting here and like it, all of a sudden I look up and I swear we had to have been in the car for like a good 25 minutes. And I look up and I'm like, Am I still in Santa Monica? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh <my> God. <laughs> it's this total like vortex, like glitch in the matrix. When you go out that, go that far to the West side, it's like, oh, what totally. happened? <laughs> totally. So, 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 so you do all of these things. So what came first? Like, did you start as a musician? <clears throat> did you start as a photographer? Or? Oh, definitely a musician first. I mean, I've always played, I played guitar since like fifth grade always wanted to be in bands always I mean I moved to California from Oregon to be in a band to play in bands so it's always been my thing so were you playing in bands in, in Oregon or no um no I moved when I was like 15 or 16 so okay I, I played then but then I, I wasn't in any there was like no bands and around so then uh yeah when I got to I moved to San Diego for a couple of years and then I I got into some bands there and I was like underage so I had that thing where I had to stand outside the door until it was time to go on and then I could just go on the stage and I had to leave right away. Like I was too young to be in the bars. Well, so, uh, but I still did it. I still, <laughs> it's like, I'm, no excuses. I'm doing this. But um, yeah, always played a band. So luckily I got, when I got in the band Kill Radio that I'm still in now, um, that one luckily took off and did something, you know? So we got, we got signed to Columbia. We got to tour for years and got, you know, got to do the MTV thing and, every, you know, it's, really got to hit the goal <laughs> totally but, luckily, but it was like right before the kind of music industry started like crumbling you know right so we kind of like we got to experience a little bit of it but i remember one time where we i was at Cap um, columbia in new york and they have like pictures around the office of all their artists and stuff and we were between like bet midler and like destiny's child or something <laughs> on the wall and i was like there is no way we're gonna make the numbers that these two do so i, don't, I think our time is limited <laughs> you're like you better take a picture of that and, and enjoy yeah. it <laughs> Right. I'm like taking all the free CDs from the office I can. I'm like, Ugh, I'm gonna have to sell these in Amoeba at some point. <laughs> how, how did you? So how long were you guys together before you you got the major label attention? Um, they were together. They were like high school buddies, and then the other three guys in the band, and then, or maybe high school, a couple of them. Then I think bass player maybe in college they met, and then I, I was in another band, The Confused, at the time, and then that's actually how I met Devin by the way. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> in this band, uh, The Confused. And Kill Radio was another band that was like us, that we were like really hustling, like putting flyers everywhere and like stickers on everything. Those days before social media, you know, when you had to, yeah, you had to go outside. Yeah, like, when it was fun. When it was fun and you'd be totally. social. Like I used to, one of the first things I did for a living when I first moved to New York, when I was like 20, I was a nightclub promoter. And I just remember just like standing outside in the freezing cold weather in this totally, fake fur God. jacket, <laughs> handing out flyer after flyer, you know, and everything closes at four in New York. So it's like a long, long night. But I, I met so many people and so many yeah. people you know, who, I, who are still really good friends. I do miss a little of that because you, with the social media, you kind of work in like a vortex a little bit, your own like yeah. little, little vortex. 
Yeah, it's like, a, I mean, it's easier, obviously, now, like, you just, you know, click a button, and then there's your promo for your thing, but also, but also, it's kind of puts everything at the same level, and it stuff just comes and goes, and it's hard to get people really stand you know? out. Yeah, no, yeah. totally. We used to totally. go to, like, the Roxy and stuff, and when there'd be a big show, somebody big playing, there'd be a line outside, I would go down the line, talk to every person, and get flyers, and I mean, even when I was trying to start a band, I would hand out flyers of, I want to start a band. <laughs> <laughs> And go to like dance clubs and people who look like they would play an instrument like do you play guitar do you play drums here's my f- number like i was desperate i just so wanted to just play you know but uh yeah i kind of missed that that was like fun it was really cool to like you know if you could really rally a good crowd of strangers not just your you know your mom and dad <laughs> mm-hmm. it was like it was cool you know it was it was fun but um totally, but, yeah so we, totally. we were in we were in um i was in the confused and kill radio had had already started playing but we we're like the same level we we're just local bands and we kind of teamed up to put shows on together and and then my band started kind of falling apart and then i at the time i was doing photography just started doing photography for um scratch magazine it was like a local mm-hmm. punk magazine and um and it was kind of a way to just go to shows for free like i got to like call joan jet and then go to her show and take pictures of it and like <laughs> it was weird you know it was like they give you a list of all the shows and you just choose those ones you want and you don't get paid but if you go and take photos you get to go to the show for free so i was i would yeah, go that's to where that perfect right so i would pick the bands i want to see but also i'd pick friends of mine so i can go take good pictures of them or go write a good review and then the magazine would put it out so i did one for kill radio because we we're friends and then I, their guitar player was different and i was and he was really bad he was like when it faced the crowd and kept like screwing everything up and they were like a high energy band so it was like as a friend and like i was like ah this sucks like who is that guy and what happened to the other guy <laughs> and then my band was kind of falling apart so i was like I was like, hmm, if I, I mean, I won't have to really sing or anything. I could just play guitar. I can go join them for a while. And like, I knew that if I asked, I'd probably get it. So I was like, ah, okay. <laughs> and then I wrote them and then they wrote me in like five <laughs> minutes. And I, but like the next night or the same night, I was in the valley learning the songs and, you know, we're with, and then, then I think we went on like a little tour in like San Francisco or something. They had just got a manager. So they were getting some, some out, out of city games and then came back and then, like we did the whiskey and then we got signed after that they were like oh you found the, the, I remember the label was there and they're like oh you found the missing piece here's the guitar player you need and let's talk tomorrow i was like, like damn okay. that, was, that was like in a week i was signed i was like Whoa. how to succeed in music without really trying right like, yeah <laughs> i was like just show up and just turn up a guitar and just go for it and then it worked so so so, so you signed with columbia talk to me about that was there like a big change in terms of like oh we actually have resources now or what did it kind of feel still the same or I mean, aside from like being sandwiched in between Beyonce and Bette Midler. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was kind of, because it happened quick and they gave us kind of like a small deal. So, and then because I joined last, there was kind of question like, do I, you know, should I get paid as like a hired guy or should I just be fully? But, um, but they put me in as even and then we wrote the rest. We put it, the album that we ended up putting out in Columbia, we wrote a set of new songs for and stuff. So as a group, so. So I get to contribute, you know, <laughs> Yeah. and then, uh, but it was cool. I mean, they, uh, I don't know. It is, it was basically just kind of labels are kind of like bank accounts, right? Like they just kind of mm-hmm. give you the money and the resources that they will, you know, here's money, go on tour and here's like a guitar, you know, money for gear and go play shows and rally some money to pay us back basically <laughs> so it was kind of cool and our manager was just like you guys need to practice more so just go on tour and don't come back so we would just leave and then when a tour would end she'd grab another tour and she like just stay there i'll hook up another tour and hook up another. so we were constantly gone it was like a non-stop <laughs> how fun it was fun though. i mean it was like you know when you're in your 20s and you need to get to just travel in a van with your friends and play yeah. these weird shows like it was rad. I mean, I had a great time. I went to Canada. We played like a bunch of stuff. We were, did really well up there. So we got to, you know, go play festivals up there and stuff. It was, it was awesome. You know, it was really fun. I think that that's an experience that every artist should have if they're lucky enough. The, the, the experience of like touring, like seriously touring. Like I've, yeah. I've done like, you know, a couple of like national tours, like theater shows. And there's, mm, awesome. it's, yeah. And it's like, there's, there's no experience. Like, like, I don't know if necessarily like it this stage of the game I would necessarily want to be on the road like that no, anymore totally. there's no but, way <laughs> but but like it's it's such a unique experience and such a unique way to see the world and such a, a unique way to bond 
or totally. bond with the people that you're touring <laughs> with. <laughs> Very true. Yes. <laughs> Wait, yeah, so this is a weird thing when you talk to other people about who've toured or, I mean, I'm still friends with some people from bands that we toured with and things. And yeah, we see of each other now, it's like, we just, you know, it's a consist. it's a, we, we all agree. Like I, I could never do that again, <laughs> but it was fun when we did. <laughs> but uh, it is, it's like, it's, when we did like warp Tour and stuff too. That was like, that thing was like yeah. every day. They only give you enough time from bus call until check-in and every man has to check in at the same time every morning. Cause they change the schedule every day. But, it, and then also you're outside all day cause you got to sell merch and do all these kind of booths where you like sign magazines or go play video games with kids that your songs are in the video games or. Yeah. They just kind of work you all day, every day. And it's like, and you're in parking lots of arenas. So it's like a thousand degrees and you have to play sometimes in like humidity. That's just like torture, you know, <laughs> but you're all kind of in it together. So that you all kind of bond with the other bands too. And cause you're all like, Oh my God, this is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> But, but it's like an accomplishment. At the end of the night, we you know have like um, bus parties and have keg parties before we have to you know go to the next stop or something. But yeah, yeah it, was, it was fun and definitely it is the thing. Like if you talk to somebody else who's been on tour, you, you, it's like a like you get it. <laughs> like, I know what you're talking about. Yes, I've been there. So but, now you so now Kill Radio, you guys took like a hiatus. Did you guys like formally break up at some point, or did you guys just kind of start working on other things? And uh, no, we and, broke up. I mean, we had towards the end of touring, we kind of had our behind the music story. But before we were famous enough to have a cool one, <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of had like you know, the typical drugs and the fighting, and so it was kind of like we knew the we we knew we hadn't made enough for the label to give us another album deal, so we knew that was coming. So. And then touring and got to just being arguments all the time. And it was really like bad. So I left first and then they, I think they went to try to record it, an EP of a couple songs and then it was like a disaster. So we just all broke up. And then uh, yeah, was, uh... well, we all stayed friends kind of. And then the ones who had drug stuff cleaned up and then, and then it was for like 10 years we stopped. And then, but we still got together as like, like you said, the bonding that you do with touring and bands and stuff. Like we're still like, family i mean it's like a you know we have um birthday parties or something we're all there and you know so um um so when the trump thing was coming up four years ago we were on like a text like okay guys because we're kind of a political band that we were like if this happens we should get together <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and we were just joking about it like oh god if trump happens you know because before we played it was the bush years so we were like oh god should we come back for trump time and sing about it you know but uh, <laughs> and then it happened, and we're like, "Oh crap! Okay, everybody, start practicing." But it was back so onto the bus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was so different because everybody was, you know, older now and healthy, and they all have like kids, and you know, it, we kind of all equally forgot how to play everything, and so it was kind of funny <laughs> to get back together, and play. So again how does so like when you to get together? At least the, when you first got back together, did it was it kind of like old hat like oh my god we're like in our 20s again or did it feel like oh my god like i'm in like a dad band i think at first it was like the old feeling because when we used to practice if somebody screwed up it'd be like you know hit the brakes and everybody yells the person who fucked it up you know and like oh wait am i supposed to cuss i can't cuss <laughs> you can you, you can cuss <laughs> okay so it, was, it was like really tense before when we rehearsed and things and then now you know when we did it even the first time we'd all just kind of joke because we'd all be like we'd have to look at videos of kids playing our songs on youtube to kind of see what my parts were to play <laughs> i'm like i don't remember what this guitar part is like youtube it then some kid in like russia is playing it i'm like okay well i'll play what he's playing. <laughs> but uh yeah so it was kind of funny at first but it, the pressure was gone so there was no label we're still doing everything just ourselves and we only get together like once a month maybe unless we're getting ready to record something but so yeah. it's super casual and it's we just doing it for fun and just for our own like but luckily people are into it but also where there's no pressure we don't have to do it we just we just totally want to. well is that yeah. something that you guys think like you know once the world really you know starts opening up again do you think you guys might kind of like yeah kind of take it back to the next level and start <laughs> playing live again and i think so i mean uh like that we just put out the this ep called election year because our singer really wanted something to work on when quarantine started. He's like, oh, can we please just record something? So he records the stuff in his garage, you know? So he just wanted something to work on while this thing was going on. 
so um so we're like, yeah let's just you know we can't really perform live so let's just throw some whatever songs we had already started to you know put them on there yeah. and then he added some more on his own and and so yeah we put a new but we haven't got to play it live so any of it so i think definitely when we're able to i think we'd be down for at least one more show to play some of these new songs but you know totally. even making the video like the video i did for the election year song that was the first one i got to do like a big production for and really get a big studio and film everything but we couldn't all get together because you know there's some some people's families were being extra careful with quarantine so i had to like green screen some people in and film everybody in separate trucks because we all couldn't be in the same truck <laughs> so it was like <laughs> it was like it was like science to try to figure out how am i going to film this thing so um we kind of made fun of it where the hashtag was like make uh, make kill radio play again with like red hats and stuff. Like, <laughs> how are we gonna do this make us make us look like we're playing together but we're not all that different so uh, i yeah, love it, it fun to do fun to make i mean i was i've been wanting to do a video for us for a long time so yeah and this time i was like well okay you know, I'm like you got to record the songs for your time now i want a project i want to make a big like proper video you know because we've been doing a yeah. lot of green screen stuff, but I didn't want to green screen my own band. So um, I wanted to film something, you know, I was, yeah. <laughs> I was getting the itch to like, I need to, uh, <laughs> how can I make this work? You know? so, uh, no, that, that's yeah. cool. I think, and I think it turned out really awesomely. How okay. did, tell me, tell me about Nancy Full Force. Oh, that is the band I did. So when Kill Radio broke up, um, I, uh, I had some songs that, or just riffs and stuff that I wanted to play. And I knew that I wanted to do like a play, but I didn't really know what story to do or anything. So I was like, well, I'll just play some songs. And then until I have enough songs to, to make an idea, you know? <laughs> so um, <laughs> I'm like, I know I could just go play shows. That's fine. So the drummer from Kill Radio did it with me. And just the two of us wrote everything and then went and did shows for a while. Um, but yeah, then it got to a point where I was like, I'm sick of playing shows and you know, the struggle, the struggle bus to try to get shows full and stuff on my own was really hard so um yeah. right i just stopped and i went uh went to portland where i grew up um i'm like i know enough people up there to have you know have a little bit of fun but i need to go away if i'm gonna write this play like i need isolation you know <laughs> if i'm at home in la it's too easy to be like i don't know what to do and then five minutes later i'm at like akbar not right <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's too much trouble to stay here and this is a big project so i gotta like so I went like six months, I went up to Portland and wrote everything and rewrote the songs and, you know, did the projections and everything and then came back and did it for the first time. So yeah, it was just a, it was a band. I mean, Nancy Full Force was kind of like a play on like Alice Cooper and like, you know, those uh -huh. kind of names, you know, Marilyn Manson. I was like, I wanted a bunch of like Nancy boys to like play some <laughs> like full force rock and roll. So, uh, so that's a, the name that's kind of stuck, but uh, yeah, but the, that, that would, that was just the band until I could get the play written. So yeah and then the yeah. play and so so then the play came together because i know you said you just redid and your goal was to kind of take it and start touring with that but the, the play originally premiered like about a decade ago yeah yeah i did it like 2010 i think and we okay. did really well we did a couple times at casita and then i did the fringe festival that's um kind of on the little theater row in la and we mm -hmm. won for best musical and it was great it was really really fun you know so and I, I just kind of at the time I assumed like, oh, cool, this will be like my new band. I'll just do this show all the time. I don't have to write any songs. <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> I was like, that was the a big appeal. Like, just, <laughs> yeah, just write one set of songs and just keep playing the same ones over and over. Um, but to put on a theater show, you know, you know, it's like there's so many people you got to hire in, in mm -hmm. the time and, and to fill the seats constantly is like, it's like too much, you know, it's like. And I would imagine, especially in a place like Los Angeles, that really isn't a theater city. Totally, like the it's audience isn't there for like the theater. Like the <laughs> like here in New York, like there's just so many different. Even just in terms of just promoting your work, you know what I mean? Like there's mm -hmm. the theater fund that'll sell discount tickets on your behalf. There's there's like just this infrastructure around, you know, all aimed at helping you fill the seats. Whereas I feel like in New York. That or in LA, that was one of the that was one of the, like the hardest adjustments when I moved to LA because I really liked the theater and I would like mm -hmm. mention the theater to people and they would just kind of like look at me like I was like <laughs> had a third head. They're like the what? <laughs> <laughs> no, so totally, I, I agree. I mean, theater is like my favorite thing. I mean, that's like that's you know theater. You get music, visuals, dance, story, performance. 
the live mm -hmm. show. It's kind of that's really where you get the whole package, you know. Yeah. I always think like, like I started theater when I was doing that, and then I did a boylesque show for like five years. But that's when I think back though, I'm like, well, I played in a band that was like really animated, and which is basically theater. And then I grew up on like Kiss and stuff, which is basically Crazy theater. theater. <laughs> <laughs> so I've kind of always been doing theater. I just didn't really pinpoint it to the right project, you know. But um, mm -hmm. but no, I love it too, and that's why I go to London a lot like usually like once or twice a year because i love just i go to a show every day i mean i that's my favorite thing to, to do so so it yeah. is hard in la when it's like i think places like london new york um because there's a lot of scene they kind of all help each other out but also there's the street traffic you know like um, mm -hmm. people you walk around all day so you see the the ads and the, the locations and everything totally LA, you know, there's no, there's no place where people there's walk no around. There's no foot <laughs> traffic. It's not centralized whatsoever. But I also think people theaters, don't... I'm sorry, I was just saying, the biggest ones are like in Hollywood, on Hollywood Boulevard, which if you live here, you never go to Hollywood Boulevard. Right? <laughs> so it's, like, <laughs> it's like in the wrong spot. Move it. But, uh... <laughs> no, it's the, it's the absolute truth. And I think also it's just, you don't think, like what I think of tourists, right? Like if you, if you're, going to New York or you're going to LA and it's the one time you're, I mean, going to New York or going to London and it's your one time in life that you're going to go. Even if you're not mm -hmm. in the theater, you're just going to go see the theater. You're going to go. You, yeah, you yeah. go to it's, New York, you have to go to Broadway. You go to LA, totally. London, you have to go to West End, the West End, you know, just to knock it off your bucket list. But like, I don't think that people, it even dawns on people, which is actually kind of stupid because like all the big stars live in Los Angeles. I know. So like, what better, like to me, that's the perfect mark. <laughs> like, hello, get to see like, the Kardashian live and had a gap. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I always think it's weird when like um like even Orange County gets like guests in their traveling shows and then New York there's you know they rotate people who and who are like celebrities that will be in the shows and and the West End they do that too. But LA it's always just the travel shows and there's never like a big I mean very rarely there's somebody who's like a TV star that's in it. Mm -hmm. And I never get it. I'm like, like I said earlier, I'm like, this is the city where all the actors live. So wouldn't there be more theater? <laughs> yeah. But I guess you they just all want to be on TV. I think they, they all want to be famous. The yeah. theater doesn't pay. And, yeah. and I think it's also the commitment aspect, right? Because you're like, yeah. especially if it's a hit, you're locked in a hit. Like, oh, I could do three guest spots, you know, on, you know, on prime time all this season, you know, that would make me exactly what I'm, I'm making. And those three guest spots would pay me exactly what I'm paying being locked in for nine yeah. weeks and stuck in New York in the cold in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> I think I about that too with, um, uh, 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 yeah, well, they're all with um, comedy stand up as well. Like we go to New York, comedians work to be comedians and London, they're very storyteller. They kind of work mm -hmm. to be like um, hosts or like, Guess, you know they're just kind of real more natural storytelling and not so jokey but LA stand-up is always about going on auditions or or <laughs> trying to get a show it's like you can't just be a comedian I did stand up for a little while just because I again I was like I kind of consider it like theater so and I don't have to hire a bunch of people to be in the show so I just get up <laughs> by myself and do it so fuck it let's go so I did a few times and it was really fun, but um, it, I felt really weird because I wasn't trying to go on auditions and, you know, and everybody else in shows, it was like the only theme is about acting gigs or they talk about, you know, castings and stuff. It's like, uh, I get up and, you know, tell stories about passing out at FUBAR or something, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, this isn't really working for me here. I mean, I don't know, but uh Stand-up yeah, no, scares the hell out of me. The whole idea uh, of stand-up. I've never done stand-up. And it scares me only because I think every other type of performance, you have a bit of a crutch, right? Like, yeah, yeah. If, you're, if you're performing music, right? And it's, like, not going well. Uh, if it's a song that people know, you can kind of coast on that and people will still hum along. Same yeah, yeah. with, like, if you're, like, acting. And it's, like, if you're not getting, like, the laughs or people aren't really reacting... Well, it's sort of not your fault that the scripts. Yeah. Up. And so you can just stick, but like just stand up, just literally just to stand there. There's no music, there's no nothing. And just, oh, that, 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 that frightens the hell. <laughs> and <laughs> no, I, say, I think anybody who's done it or, or who does it regular, it, it, it is like the ultimate, like the theatrical pressure. <laughs> it's like, you're just by <laughs> yourself in a spotlight with everybody looking at you and you got to make them watch. It's like, <sighs> um yeah i always joke yeah. it's like um it's like flying a plane like you got to kind of 
get it up off the ground and then just try to not wreck it and then land it nicely and then you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was fun to do, but I don't think I could do it regular on the regular. You know, it's kind of it's a it lot. It is a lot of pressure. But. It's a lot of pressure, and and, it, and it's like it's it's you're always work. kind of like what you were talking about. Like, ooh, I could put this show together and just for the next 10 years perform and not have to learn any new music and, not have to, <laughs> and it's like you can't do that with comedy like you have to consistently just create 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 yeah, i think yeah. it takes a very special person and it takes a very special brain and it takes a very a, a very unique case of i want to be in show business neediness to yeah, like it's, it's really really, really like, like pursue and you know yeah it's also like because when you play music you know um these people can hear it online or see it on your instagram or something and then they see you play it live and it's cool and they get to see you play it live again but if you do stand up it's like you know once your jokes kind of out there on socials and then they That's see it. you do it live they're like <laughs> you didn't have any new jokes you know it's kind of like a disappointment so it's like oh you have to keep writing stuff because you know everything that goes online is going to be is, is over yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah it's tough talk but to it was, me about too like um, oh, oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go, can, oh, continue. I was going to say music and theater too is like you have your band mates with you on stage. So if you're kind of stressing, you can look over and like, you know, you have your friends there with you. <laughs> but when you're doing stand up, <laughs> you're like, you look around, there's nobody there. You're like, ah, it's just me. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Ground that has own. to be the slowest death ever. <laughs> like, just, like, I just the idea of bombing as it's like, it, just, it has, seems like that has to be the slowest death. And it's like, you know, 10 minutes, you know, it sounds like not a lot of time, but 10 minutes oh, is yeah. actually a really long time. <laughs> yeah, even when you get the early gigs and they give you like three or three or five minutes, it's like, it seems like forever. It's like, am I, am I still going? <laughs> <laughs> But it was fun to do. I don't think I could do it again, though. I, it's, it's a, did you it's like when a, you were when you were doing it? Did you just totally write your own thing, or did you kind of like work with someone to kind of learn the ropes, or was it just kind of like a, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna try this, and you just did it? Well, I was doing um, after I did the Charlie thing. Then I um, I did a boylesque show, and that was like for five, I think five or six years. It was like once a month. We like a variety show. We have people from dance or from, so it was kind of almost like kind of like a cabaret kind of a thing. Like totally, it was like dancers. A, some people play music, some people would read poetry and it would all be kind of like, kind of funny. It was like burlesque, but it wasn't like old timey. It was kind of like modern kind of in a variety of different people. And we chose a short film that was like a dirty film and or, but funny, you know? So I'd always host it. I do a number, but then I was always doing more comedy ones. Like I always said that I was like the bearded lady at the circus, you know, I, was like, <laughs> I, would, I would host everything and I would do like a strip number and stuff, but it, it wouldn't be like sexy at all. It'd be comedy, you know? So it was after doing that for so long and hosting those that I was like, you know what? I think I could just go do just this part, just do the stand-up part. And, you know, so that's how it kind of led into another thing that started with one thing and kind of led to something else. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. It was, uh, how did, why did you stop the boy last? That, sound, that sounds like a fun concept and like the monthly thing sounds like. Oh, it was cool. I, the... I did it at the Moving Arts Theater here. It's kind of next to Casita del Campo. And that was really uh -huh. fun. The theater was like a black box. Um, there was like broken chairs everywhere. It was super janky. But it kind of felt like this cool, like, you know, like you're in a basement in like Berlin or something. It had this really kind of cool vibe to it. The weird yeah. kind of performers and some very androgynous or drag or, or super butchy. And, you know, there's uh, all kinds of stuff happened. I mean, peeing on the floors to... <laughs> reading poetry as vampires i mean it's the freakiest things that just somehow work together <laughs> were you was like did you were you the booker like did you find all of these acts was it oh yeah all it was you? just all different friends of mine I'm just, i would uh, pick everybody so and it also was a good excuse for me to work out too i'm like if i have to be naked on stage on this stage <laughs> i should start working out so. <laughs> it was really just a way to keep me in the gym for a while there you go <laughs> well by any means necessary right <laughs> yeah but it was fun to I've, do but it it was just one of those things after so long, it's kind of like, you know, I would, it's hard to gather new groups of people every time, you know, and then promote it and sell tickets. And yeah, it could be a, so, I, it could be probably like a grind after a while. It's like, oh, yeah, here we go again. It's like a pushing it uphill. Yeah. I was like, I don't yeah, I want to do this anymore. <laughs> There's yeah. also too, after I get, I've spent so much time doing everybody, getting everybody else together that by the time it'd be the show date. Devin, again, would be another time I worked with Devin. He was in the band 
for the show. So mm-hmm. we would we're talking, our... by the way, Radio Land, we're talking about Devin Tate. Oh. He's actually been a guest yeah. on our show. <laughs> he's, a friend of, awesome. he's a friend of ours. He's a friend of the show. But Devin, I'm sorry, continue. Oh, um, yes, Devin's great. I th- it's so funny. We've always kind of crossed paths in a variety of different like work and stuff. So for the Boyless show, he was always there with the keyboards and um, but like I was saying, like sometimes it'd be so much work to get everybody else together that when it'd be my turn to get up and play, I would not know my lyrics or what I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like run in the bathroom with Devin and like play it really quick and like, okay, I'd write it on my hand and then let's go. And we just start the show and go for it. You know? So uh, yeah, I noticed my numbers started like sucking. <laughs> and then it was, you know, then I'm like, I'm the host of this and I don't even know what I'm doing. I need to stop. This is like taking its toll. <laughs> no, that but, uh, makes sense. That makes sense. Tell me a bit about your photography. Like I saw you, I've been following your quarantine series. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> tell, tell me a bit about, about how that came about. Are, are these things that are like commissioned or is, do you have just like concepts and you just kind of call people in and say, hey, let's take some photos. And or yeah, how do you, how usually, do you, how does that come up? Usually what it's been is, I mean, I've done video for so long that photography only started a couple of years ago. And it's, you know, it's the same equipment. It's just kind of a different, different way of capturing a moment I guess so mm-hmm. uh I just kind of did it for um I kind of got everything to work video stuff just on my own where I could just film it and edit it and you know have more freedom not have to rent a bunch of stuff so I just had one year where I was like I'm just gonna buy a bunch of new equipment and you know and just step it up you know yeah <clears throat> and then um, and then yeah it just started just people I knew also you know when I was working in clubs that you know there'd be dancers or drag performers or it was just kind of always around kind of people that were interesting looking and stuff so that's what I would usually do like I'm like if I before a DJ gig I'd grab somebody who's going to be there later and we'd go do photos and I just practiced you know like and then it became a thing of like getting jobs and getting hired to do more photography and stuff so um and it's been good it's kind of the times I don't get video work and I can go do some photo stuff and that usually leads to doing some other photo stuff you know just kind of always I think when people see you doing stuff consistently it it helps you come to come to mind for them when they want to hire somebody to do that, you know? Totally. So, and so you're I'm like, always, a, I was going to say your social game is on. Like I said, I feel like, I don't feel like there's like a week that goes by that like, you're not in my <laughs> feet. Like, did you like, you're all, you're all, you're always, and no, and I don't mean that like in a bad, like, I mean like your social game is clearly on because it's consistent and it's like, Oh, look what he's doing now. How cool is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know i try not to do too much or you know if i try to post everything like okay this is the week i'm doing this thing and then this will come out later but yeah i try to but, but yeah photography i really the quarantine series i started this year because um initially it was going to be kind of a commission thing i was going to do a calendar of people who work in nightlife that are you know all they're all out of work right now because that's thing that's you know closed <laughs> there's nothing they uh-huh. can do so I was gonna and go and sitting at home it. in their underwear, which is, yeah. seems to be the running theme. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I wanted everybody to not like be totally in shape or not look totally glamorous. So just wear your pajamas and grab your dog. You know, like it's kind of fun to see these people we used to see every week in the club life, but now they they're all at home. So it's kind of a way to check up on everybody and show that everybody's okay. They're at home, but yeah. also give everybody kind of a little glow up moment. So I come over and like bring all these lights and kind of make it cool looking and. But, um, and we're going to sell them as like a calendar and then give it to like the club, you know, a certain club person or something, or I don't know, it's like to save our stages or something, but, um, right. And it's just really hard to get, I was like, oh, a calendar, that's like 13, <laughs> 12, 12 to 13 photo shoots. <laughs> uh, maybe I don't want to fully do that. So <laughs> I'm like, that's a lot of Ubers and that's a lot of money to put up front to hope to maybe sell for a charity so I was like I, I don't know if I can do this you know or if it's really no, safe totally. to do too and going into everybody's house and stuff so um so I did a, a good yeah. handful of them and we're really safe I mean photography is the, the original social distancing project right like you're always Pro- yeah them, totally you know? so um so then it just kind of fizzled I, out but <clears throat> I'm gonna do like a, a book I'm gonna put on sale I think on Friday if I can say it uh-huh. but or show it but uh I'm just kind of taking because I'm always doing stuff and always putting stuff out. And sometimes it was like event photography or something too. That's not really what I like, but you know, people have seen, I just wanted to take like the best of everything since I started doing photography a couple of years ago and put it in one book yeah. and then kind of write a little stories about each thing. 
it's almost like a, a um, like a 2020, we, we're all kind of reviewing stuff that we've already done or, you know, kind of taking a pause. So I just kind of took a moment to just kind of weed through all of the shoots that I've done and pick the best stuff. And that way you can kind of just, if it's kind of floated by before, because I had too much stuff going on, that at least this can kind of show it all the best of it in one package, you know? So the quarantine yeah, photos are going in there at the end. Yeah. That's cool. So is, so is it going to be like a physical book available for purchase or is yeah. it going to be like a digital thing? Oh, that's yeah, awesome. Like, so, um, no, but, um, yeah, it's just a, a printed book. I, it's like a hardcover book. I'm, I'm, I'm printing it myself and or through um, an app thing, but uh, and shipping them out myself. So it's not published by anybody. It's just for one month. I'm just going to sell it during December as kind of a year end thing. And also, like I said, it's my birthday next month. So kind of a, a kind of in cap to the show some of my work and because I can't have like an art show or something too you know so it's like something I can kind of totally you know, and then just that's exciting for the yeah I mean, that's so, really exciting but I think that's going to be so fun I can't wait to I can't wait to, to buy a copy I really can't what so what is <laughs> what so so this is the time of year where you say traditionally you kind of start taking stock you kind of do a little retrospective you got to do a little retrospective and look at what you've been doing you start planning 2021 i mean you start planning the next year so 2021 right everything's still up in the air we don't know if clubs are reopened. open yeah. we don't know what'll happen what so you got the book coming out what um uh what's what do you see being next or what do you what are you like kind of planning for next year oh uh, rehab um <laughs> <laughs> Um, I will, I, um, I'm going to put this book out, like I said, just for the end of the year, I don't want to be printing books all through next year. So I'm just going to do like a chunk of them for the month of December and then, um, then kind of switch gears. So hopefully things will be open next year. Um, um, the, the Charlie play, I kind of, I've been working on to, to kind of polish it up. So if I could still go and travel with it, I'm, I am, I am booked to be in London in June. So maybe I can plan it around there, but we'll see. Oh, that's cool. But in the meantime, that's I did cool. have, um, uh, what some of the money from this photo book is going to help me out with is, um, a friend of mine is drawing the Charlie play as the comic book. I mean, it always has this kind of Dick Tracy kind of comical theme to it. So uh -huh. uh, he made it made it the comic book so um so i'll be selling those after the you know after the new year so at least the book will be out there to, in, in like a cartoon version of it and then hopefully when we can have shows then we'll have the shows again but just kind of yeah. keep the name of the play out there but but yeah we're making it like a i'm going to switch gears after december ends there's no more photo book and it's going to be comic book so that's what i have in my <laughs> Comic book you're we can work on at home. <laughs> you're so like organized. I think it's because you're a Capricorn, I think, because yeah. Capricorns are very like, <laughs> like they're very organized and bossy and very like, this is the way it needs to happen. Like, because I, because I see it, because yep. I'm, I'm like all over the place. Like, I'm like, okay, we need to do this. We, oh crap, but I, I need to do that. But when are we going to, but you seem very regimented, which is, which is, I guess, why you can be as prolific as you are, because you're very organized. Yeah. I think it's, that that's it's a poor thing for sure. It's like always working, <laughs> always like OCD. Yeah, it's, everything's in order and has to make sense to go after the next thing. And so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I try. But yeah, that's the plan for next year. I mean, like I said, maybe the comic book will get some audience too. You know, that, that way when we do the shows again, some people can have some new people see it. But um, yeah. that's basically my thing for next year. I mean, I've kind of, this year has been, you know, other than the, the the bad side of all the virus stuff, but it has been good to be home and then kind of slow down for a minute and like totally you said, take kind of like regroup day. and yeah. <laughs> well, I can't wait for next year. And I think, can I say, I think you're so fascinating. Oh, and, thanks. And I, and I, I want to keep on, I want to keep on talking, but we are at the end <laughs> of our time. Uh, and here you thought, how am I going to stay on the phone for an hour? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I could do this. I could do this. I could do this. <laughs> Uh, Before well, we, we can do it again when we um when we do Devin's next video because you know there's going to be another one. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> I know, I can't wait to see. Well, you know, it's so interesting because he and I have been talking about kind of working on some music together. So you know, oh, cool. maybe it'll be a joint thing. Maybe it'll be a joint thing. But where can we before 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 I sign off? Where where can where can our listeners like find you on Instagram? On where where should they go to to see Instagram all of the amazing has, yeah. work of of uh, Jasmine King? <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, just go to at Justin King on Instagram, and I put a little link tree in there, so it goes to the Charlie site and then the my band stuff as well. So it all links. I kind of I kind of use Instagram as almost like a my like resume, I guess. <laughs> it's like no, I, that makes sense. I don't really put like food pictures or anything on there. It's like all just my work. So that's where you can kind of see everything. Cool. At Justin King. Thank you so much for chatting. Yeah, thank you. I can't wait to, I can't wait until things open up and um, I, I, we have to get together for a drink once we can. You have to, you have to bring out the Madonna dress again. Yeah, <laughs> totally. It's in a, it's in a, it's actually, it's in a box. It's in a box. Jeremy who designed, I think you met Jeremy. He was there the day of the, what should we call it? He's been oh, quarantining yeah. with me. We were, we were in Palm Springs quarantining and um, he has it in, in a, in a box. So yeah, I'll pull that out for. for that was so fun. I remember, I think I wanted to put like everybody's, like do a version of everybody's taste. Cause everybody was so cool in that video that it was like, oh man, it's so hard to edit. Cause like, Everything looks so fun. <laughs> like, uh, I, wanted, I wanted to put out 18 videos, you know, like let's do everybody's version, but you know, it's Devin's song. Yeah. He, he calls the shots. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, well, thank you yeah. so much. It has been an absolute blast. Uh, you too. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hi there. It's Jordan Von Haslow. Thanks for listening. I hope you had as much fun as we did today. Before you go, be sure to like today's conversation and subscribe so you never miss another. Also, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at at Showtime with Jordan for breaking news and unaired behind the scenes. And don't miss us live every Monday at 11 a.m. Pacific on Hot 702.5 FM Las Vegas. See you next time for another Showtime with Jordan Von Haslow and Friends. <laughs>